this chart uh, came out uh, uh, about two weeks ago, and the Economist ranks the Philippines number six out of 66. So we are in the top 10% in the world in economic resiliency. So we are also the best in Southeast Asia in terms of financial strength. The assessment shows that the country continues to enjoy the confidence of the international community, which go a long way in boost, boosting our recovery efforts. The President's conservative economic policies and pursuit of economic reforms, such as tax reform, have kept the country's financial position strong because we have strengthened our revenue flows from train, followed by the sin tax adjustments, we have been able to slowly bring down our debt to 39.6% of GDP. This used to be 70%, so we are less than 40% already. This approach of saving for rainy day has given us ample fiscal space to borrow money for programs to defeat the COVID-19 and revive the economy. We achieved the credit rating of BBB+, Plus, the highest in our country's history, which signals that the world thinks that we are a very worthy borrower. The credibility allows us to borrow more cheaply and from a broader range of sources. Rice tarification has also continued to keep inflation low and stable. Inflation in April further eased to 2.2%, well within the low end of our target of 2 to 4%. Uh, we have to do many things in order to revive the economy, and I would like to propose the following priorities. Number one, uh, after we are confident that, uh, that, we can, that we are in control of the death rate and infection, we should restart and accelerate the Build, Build, Build program subject to compliance of minimum health standards. The infrastructure remains to be the best driver of economic growth because it has the best multiplier effects in, term of, in terms of employment and shared prosperity. We should also hire contract, contact tracers in mass to boost our efforts to stop transmission and defeat COVID-19 while providing jobs. You know, we lost about 1.2, 1.5 million jobs. They're temporarily lost, but you know, if we hire these guys to do contact tracing, which we are having a very hard time, right? Doing the contact tracing. I think we can uh, provide good jobs to people uh, because sometimes it takes one contact tracer one whole day to do contact tracing for one case. So uh, we need to hire enough contact tracers to match the numbers we expect that uh, will come uh, with more testing. To attract investors who want to relocate to, from other countries and in search of resilient, high growth potential economies like the Philippines, this will involve the urgent passage of CITIRA or Package 2 of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program, which we now propose to include flexible tax and non-tax incentives so we can target specific companies that we want to invest here. The bill has been with the Senate for a few months. We would like to ask for your support so that Congress can pass this before June 3. Number four, we have to stimulate the consumer demand. We must promote manufacturing of products that have strong and inelastic demand, such as those as food production. Inelastic demand means that you will buy it regardless of what your income is or what the price of the good is. And that is food. Number one, you have to eat food. So we must push food production and food logistics. We must be able to get the food here uh, cheap. We must be able to store the food so that uh, the fresh food so it will last. We would also like to support the whole value chain for the food products, including food markets for efficient distribution, similar to fruit and vegetable markets established many years ago in Japan. 
the Duterte administration's economic team and our legislators are finalizing an economic recovery program that will help us combat the pandemic and provide industries, especially micro, small, and medium enterprises, the assistance they need to get back on their feet and our fellow Filipino workers, fellow Filipinos back to work. So, Mr. President, our real problem is that the people are not buying things. So we must, because their incomes have gone down, so we must provide them uh, the means of buying things. Because if they don't buy things, it's useless to help the companies. So it, we have to stimulate demand. And that's to build, 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 and push food production. Thank you, Sunny. Now, uh, I'd like to hear uh, from the DOH. Uh, do you have something to say here? Uh, sir? Yes, sir. But uh, we understand that the uh, presentation uh, of uh, Secretary Galvez, uh, the chief implementer, on the proposed general concept on uh, for ECQ transition, uh, okay. And then my presentation uh, comes next. John Gervis then. Sir, Mr. President, allow me to present uh, our proposed general concept for the enhanced community quarantine transition. Next slide, please. The purpose of this presentation is to seek approval on the general operational concept for ECQ transition. In the absence of a vaccine, all what we can do is prevent and contain it and mitigate its impact. The government, however, cannot endure uh, the ECQ for extended period of time as its resources are very limited. Hence, it, is, it has to balance between health and economy. As a backgrounder, some precautionary measures have been given by the World Health Organization with the recommendation on easing of quarantine restriction. According to WHO, any plans to ease quarantine restriction should be carried out gradually and in a pace manner, parang yung Mr. President na hina hina lang po, to prevent resurgence of infection and that a strong and resilient health uh, system should be in place like testing and tracing. Otherwise, this will likely lead prelude to resurgence of the disease. Also considered in the proposal is the World Health Organization interim protocol on rapid operations to contain the initial emergence of pandemic influenza, specifically the zoning concept that can be effectively applied at the LGU barangay level. As shown also is our updated national action plan operational framework to prevent and contain the COVID-19 virus. Our plan is COVID carrier centric, meaning to contain the virus, we have to focus our intervention on the carriers. Our revised operational framework added the prevention prior to the detection phase and the adoption of the end-to-end -end T3 management system for COVID-19 carriers, which mean test, trace, and treat. With the prevailing situation, the following were the key consideration. Next slide, please. In coming up with the general operational concept for ECQ transition. Number one, how the concept can work within the bounds of the current IATF guidelines. Number two, how can we implement the DOH strategy that is nationally, national government enabled, local government led, and people-centered COVID-19 response. Number three, how can we protect the economic corridors and zones? Number four, how can we protect and sustain the gains of the current ECQ that we imposed since uh, March uh, 16? Also, aside from the doubling time as consideration in determining what areas to be placed on ECQ, we also include the granular data of incidence rate and attack rate by barangay, municipality, and city. We have also considered how can the government better address the influx of the returning overseas Filipinos and the transport of locally stranded individuals. For the information of the President, uh, 
we have more or less more than 20,000 OFWs stranded in Metro Manila. And uh, they are also continuously coming for this month, more or less 42,000. And lastly, how can the government apply the economy of force on areas that have no rec record of COVID cases and relocate forces and resources with massive concentration on the critical areas that direly needs government action? Uh, sir, uh, one question. <clears throat> Itong opening limited movement uh, uh, which we allow the public to uh, maybe uh, enjoy the, the, the freedom of movement. Uh, uh, kailangan ho natin itong maintindihan ng lahat. Uh, have we communicated to the common man itself na uh, ito yung mga tao, ito yung pwede, ito yung hindi? Or would you rather that uh, the presidential uh, spokesman would do it for us? Siya nang isa-isahin na lang naman yung siguro ito. And para to make sure that uh, everybody is uh, uh, heard or at least uh, he knows uh, where he belongs to dito sa category of not uh, being allowed and allowed uh, have this published or uh, sa PTV4 so ilagay lahat doon kung sino then of course with your uh, your uh, uh, verbal uh, narration uh, okay na Mr. President, kompleto po ang DOH ng lahat po ng uh, communications, uh, materials, lahat po ng uh, uh, mga advisories. And uh, the chairman uh, of the National Task Force uh, Task Group on Strategic Communications is none other than uh, your uh, spokesperson, si Secretary Harry Roque. So, uh, we will make sure that all of these materials are... Uh, are uh, submitted to him for cascading to the uh, general public. Uh, yes, it's very public. important that the common tao demand, demand himself who is concerned with the, about his livelihood must understand that he is at present not allowed. At yung iba allowed. So it must be uh, it must appear to him very clear that uh, ito sila uh, he belongs to this category and why he is allowed to work. At ito namang mga ano, why they cannot be allowed to mix again with the, the outside world.